Hi, I'm Adam Witt. I'm the Harrison Township Clerk. I've been the clerk since November of 2012 when I was elected in that position. And since that time, I've run uh, over a dozen elections. And I'd like to take an opportunity to talk to you about what a clerk's office does when we're leading up to an election, how we uh, make sure that we have voters registered, how we make sure we know we have the right voters in the right place, and how you can check and, and make sure that you're registered. There are a lot of different ways to register to vote. What I think is the easiest way is come and see your local clerk. Um, bring your driver's license, come on down, we'll uh, make sure you're registered and it's a great way to look you up. Every clerk in Michigan, uh, township clerk, city clerk, are responsible for maintaining that voter file. So we are more than capable of helping you and, and making sure that you have that opportunity to register. There are a couple other options uh, when you go to register to vote. You can register online. Uh, if you go to the Michigan Voter Information Center, it's uh, michigan.gov slash vote. You can go on there and check that you're registered or check um, where you're registered. All you need to do uh, is type in your name, birth date, uh, and a couple other little pieces of information that you have, and you'll be able to check if you're registered or go through the registration process. Another thing that's happened recently, uh, since 2018, and the adoption of Proposal 3 in the state constitution uh, is that the Secretary of State's office is required to ask you if you'd like to be registered to vote, and so they will register you there anytime you do a transaction at your Secretary of State's office, uh, unless you specifically opt out of that process. With those changes, and really Michigan's historically been a very aggressive voter registration state in general, um, we have a very high registration rate, so not a lot of people are unregistered. But another thing that changed with Proposal 18.3 is you can register all the way up until Election Day at your Secretary of State's office, at your clerk's office, and in those 14 days leading up to the election, you can come uh, right to your clerk's office and register there in person. Uh, now, the rules are a little bit different when you try and register in that 14-day window uh, or on Election Day. Um, so you'll need different information than you would if you were registering in advance of that. So when you're registering in, those four, in that 14-day period, um, you want to bring your photo ID, so driver's license. Uh, that's obviously preferable, especially if it has your current address on it. Um, but you also need to bring an additional piece of documentation that establishes where you live. It can be a utility bill, bank statement, paycheck, uh, anything that was really something that was mailed for you uh, from a government organization is really the best form of identification. It's got to have your name on it. It's got to have your address on it. It can't have somebody else's information, but you say you live there. So one of the other questions that we often get about voter registration is how do we maintain those lists? The maintenance of those voter registration files is a constant and ongoing process. There are certain federal laws and state laws that limit when we can pull people out, how we can pull people out, but a big part of our job is trying to remove people that we know have moved. In conjunction, the state works with uh, other different states to try and share information uh, so that we have the best data and we can pull people out to make sure that they're not registered. We want to make sure that we have very accurate voter files. Uh, voting absentee. Again, with the proposal 18.3 uh, that was adopted by Michigan voters overwhelmingly, everyone has the right to vote absentee without a reason. So we've seen an incredible growth in absentee voting. In order to get an absentee ballot. In Michigan, it is a two-step process. First, you have to apply for an application. So you'll fill out an application, say, I want a ballot. When we get that request, we check that signature against the signature that we have in the voter file. And only at that time will we send you out a ballot. That ballot gets mailed out to the address that we have on file. Uh, we can't, without written request, mail it to someplace else. It goes right to your house. Election mail isn't forwarded. So if there's a forward because somebody moved, it won't get forwarded someplace else. So uh, we'll mail it out to your house. Uh, you're able to vote that ballot and send it back in. And again, we check that signature when it comes back to us. So there are two times that we're checking signatures to verify that the voter uh, is actually the person that voted. There's a couple different ways uh, that you can get that ballot back to us. Uh, the first option is you mail it back. You put the applicable postage on it and they'll send it back to us. The post office has said that they won't reject them because you didn't nail the postage amount, but the other way that you can guarantee that it doesn't have any lag time in the post office or it gets lost or something like that is come and drop it off at 
uh, your local clerk's office during office hours. And many clerks have drop boxes at various locations uh, where you can drop that off. I know in Macomb County, the county clerk in the past has published a list of those for each community. Uh, it's where you can find it. I know in our community, it's right at the door. Uh, it's a 24-hour drop box that we check daily, um, so we make sure that we get it in. Something else that we do when we check the signature, we scan those ballots in. And when they scan in, it actually updates on the state website that your ballot was received by your local clerk. So if you go to that michigan.gov slash vote and go to the Michigan Voter Information Center, you can confirm that your ballot has been received by your local clerk. Something that we do in Harrison Township is if we have email addresses, um, we do send out bulk emailings every day when we do scanning. We send you an email and say, hey, we got it, we got your ballot. Um, something that happens often is you might still get election mail. You might still get something from a third party that says, hey, you haven't voted, come and fill out this application. If it's not from the clerk's office, it's not from the clerk's office. They might have gotten a list three months ago that says, hey, so-and-so hasn't voted. Well, they don't have the latest information. They're not your clerk. They're sending things out to try and get you out there to vote. Um, so not necessarily ill intent, but often confusing. So always contact your local clerk if you have a question about if something you got in the mail. Absentee voting is a process in Michigan that has been around for an exceptionally long time. The way we do it has been tested and has worked very well in Michigan. I know when we were cleaning out our office, I found absentee ballot applications from the Civil War. So this is something that has been going on for a very long time. Now obviously, different situation then, but with the changes in 18.3, it's available for anybody. Michigan has 83 counties, 280 cities, and over 1,200 townships. And every time we have an election, those cities and townships need to attract election workers. This is one of those challenging things, especially when you get into a larger community where you're trying to staff appropriately a precinct to be able to handle that. Around here, they're all paid positions, so they are people receiving compensation. What we do is we try and recruit all the time for these types of positions because there's always a need for an election worker. It's a big commitment, but it's an important job, and, and I know a lot of them take a lot of pride in the work that they're able to do um, work in the precinct. To be a precinct worker, you have to be a registered voter, and what what is required to be an election worker is that you have to go through a training. Every two years, and this is the bare minimum, uh, you have to go through a training program. So the county clerk is responsible for training election workers. Except for in communities of over 10,000 people in population, the local clerk can administer the training if they wish. I don't know a lot of places where that local clerk does do that training. It's, a, it's an opportunity for that local clerk to give uh, more specific training to provide more detailed information just to the how that community works. So every two years is the bare minimum, but we do training prior to every election. Uh, so last year we had two elections. We did two rounds of training. So my election workers will have sat through training three times in a presidential year because you'll have that presidential primary training, the August primary training, and then the November primary training. Uh, because every election has its own unique things. So these are people that go through training, and most of them have been doing it for a long time. So they're well experienced and know a lot of the things that can come up during the process. One thing as we're recruiting election workers, and this is something that's required, is that at a bare minimum you have to have one member of each of the major parties that are there at all times. Um, we always strive, if we have a precinct of 10, we try to have five from one party, five from the other. Obviously it's not always possible, but you do your best to balance those precincts as equally as possible. Uh, there are certain tasks that under state law uh, you're required to have members of both parties there uh, working and uh, doing a task together, it's sort of a checks and balance. Uh, one thing you'll learn about clerks is there's checks and balances and backups to pretty much everything we do. We're the people that are wearing belts and suspenders when it comes to elections. Again, leading up to the election, we have a lot of different steps we take to make sure that voting uh, can be trusted, that it's secure, and that we know uh, what we say it's doing, things are doing. And so it starts with our voting machines, uh, these were purchased as part of a state contract in 2017, and 
part of that is those contracts include preventative maintenance. So we have people that are certified to work on those machines that will come out and do latest updates, check, uh, make sure we have the appropriate software and firmware installed on them, uh, make sure that all the hardware is functioning properly. Uh, as we get closer to election day, we start doing our own testing on the machines. It's called logic and accuracy testing. We take uh, sample ballots and we mark them up according to state law and promulgated rules from the Secretary of State. And we run them through every single machine using every memory stick or hardware that we have, um, testing it in basically every way that these machines and these ballots can be marked to make sure that the machines are recording everything properly and based on the standards that are set. And so if we have precinct one and there's two memory sticks, we got to run those through twice. Sometimes you're running upwards of 200 ballots through every precinct um, just to get the results that you're looking for to make sure that everything is done properly. So we do preliminary testing in-house in the clerk's office, uh, and then we hold what's known as a public accuracy test. So we notice in the paper uh, that there's an opportunity to come and see the township election commission or your city election commission is going to run a public accuracy test where we'll run that test deck through the machine and see if it adheres to the uh, chart of predetermined results to make sure that the machine is recording everything properly. So that's an opportunity for you to come there, see how the machines work. Uh, the nice thing about Michigan is that we still maintain paper ballots. So even if the tabulator, which all it does is say, yep, you marked this box and it goes in this answer, even if that tabulator makes some mistakes, we have paper ballots there uh, that we can always go back to. So that's always the best backup is the actual voter marked ballot. Kids in college have to make sure that when they register, they register where their home is. And for some people, that's the apartment they moved into in East Lansing, and that's okay, but that's where you get to vote. If you're home with mom and dad, you can't really change back as easily. You'd have to re-register and have to have data and proof that you, reg you actually live someplace else. If you maintain your registration in your hometown and you're away at school, you have to make sure that you're leaving plenty of time because we have to mail that ballot to you. Uh, we can't email a ballot. We can't fax a ballot. It doesn't work that way. Uh, we can't hand the ballot to mom and dad. Um, we could hand it to you if you're able to swing by. Clerk's offices have to be open that weekend prior to the election, at least one of the days, so you can swing by. You won't have to miss any classes. If you come by with photo ID, you can request a ballot right then. Vote it and drop it off, and you'll be all set. Um, but if you sign up at a voter drive at school and you use your address at the dorm or in your apartment, it changes where you vote. Um, so then you'd have to go vote in that community. So if you are military, you have the ability to request a ballot, a move ballot, military overseas voter. Um, and we actually can email that ballot to somebody to your you know, DOD issued email address and you'll be able to vote and then send it back to us and we can record it that way. Um, there's a couple different processes. If you get it in time, we try and mail you a physical hard copy if at all possible because it's a little bit more secure. But we required under law 45 days prior to the election. If we do have any move ballot requests, we have to issue that ballot and make sure we get it out to you. There is normally somebody where people are stationed that is appointed to assist voters to make sure you have the opportunity to know how you vote and how you register to vote. So that's a great resource there. If you aren't registered as a person that's in the military, you're allowed to do what's called a federal write-in absentee ballot. So even if we can't get you the ballot in time, you can fill out the, the what's called, called a FWAB and do a write-in ballot. And it also requests a paper ballot at the same time. So that way you can get everything that's out there. So one thing that uh, people notice uh, coming up to the 2022 election cycle is you probably are going to get a new voter ID card in the mail uh, because as Michigan comes out of the last census, the 2020 census, we've crafted new districts either through the independent uh, redistricting uh, council at the state or through the county commission for county commissioner seats. And that's often a time that clerks will take the opportunity to look at their precinct boundaries, look at new population data. Uh, precincts are limited in size to 2,999.
So we want to make sure that our precincts fall underneath that limit. And possibly if we're way under that limit or if people moved, we can shift those boundaries to help balance those precincts, to manage lines. And I know a lot of clerks take the opportunity while you're doing redistricting to also change precinct boundaries. But regardless, odds are your state house, your state senate, your congressional district, the numbers changed. So at a bare minimum, you'll get a new card with new numbers on it. When you get that voter ID, you want to make sure that you keep that in a safe place. When you come to vote, you don't necessarily need to bring it. It just tells you where to vote. Uh, when you do come, we uh, ask that if you do have an ID, that's when you're gonna show your ID if you do have your ID with you. Come and see your local clerk. Your local clerk is your your closest representation, your closest link to that election process. We are the trusted source for election information to know whether you're registered, whether what you got in the mail is a legitimate thing. Is it really an application? Did, did I get what I thought I got? Call us. That's what your local clerk does. That's, that's what we are happy to do. Um, we're one of your links to dispel any questions you have about misinformation or a question about how the election process works. Please. Don't post a question on Facebook expecting me to see it. Come see me. Come give me a call. Come give me an email. I know Facebook's a great tool for certain things, but unless you're talking to a trusted election official, you might not be getting the right information. So please reach out. That's what clerks are for.